This is a hypothesis test about two population means. Yeah, the question says a manufacturer claims that the watt usage of its 17-inch pa flat panel monitors is less than that of its leading competitor. Is there enough evidence to support the manufacturer's claim? Assume that the populations are normally di distributed and the population variances are equal. We're going to use a 0 0.05 level of significance. And we'll say that the first population is the manufacturer. So we see the sample size is 12, the standard deviation is 2.4, and the mean of the sample is 73. On the second population, it's that of the competitor. We'll say the sample size is 15, standard deviation is 3.2 of that 15 uh, TVs, and the mean is 74. When conducting a hypothesis test, the first step is to identify the given values in symbolic form. Now we'll label any subscripts as whether it's the first population or the second population. Our sample size for the first population or the manufacturer is 12. S1, subscript 1, is 2.4. X bar 1 is 73. Same thing with our competitor. N2 is 15. S2 is 3.2. And X bar 2 is 74. We're using a level of significance, or alpha equals 0 0.05. In step number two, we need to identify the claim and write it in symbolic form. In English, it says, that, is there enough evidence to, to uh, support the manufacturer's claim that the watt usage of its 17-inch flat panel monitors is less than that of its leading competitor? So the manufacturer, mu1, is less than that of mu2. The population mean of the manufacturer is less than that of the population mean of the competitor. Since our claim does not contain equality, we have to put that in the alternative hypothesis. And then we do the opposite for the null hypothesis because it has to contain equality, so less than, the opposite of that, is greater than or equal to. So mu1 is greater than or equal to mu2 for the null hypothesis. The alternative is mu1 is less than mu2. Subtracting mu2 from both sides, we could have written it as mu1 minus mu2 is greater than or equal to 0 for the null hypothesis. And for the alternative, mu1 minus mu2 is less than 0. reason we need this is for these uh, numerical values obtained from the null hypothesis to be used in our test statistic in step number 3. In step number 3, because we are assuming that the population variances are equal, we have to use a test statistic for our pooled variance formula. So t, our test statistic, is equal to x bar 1 minus x bar 2, the difference in the sample means, minus the difference in the population means, mu1 minus mu2, divided by the square root of what we call the pooled variance, that p stands for pooled variance. So it's sp squared, which is the variance of the pooled uh, variances from the first and second sampling, divided by n1, and then plus the pooled variances of our, divide, of our two samplings divided by n2. The pooled sampling formula is n1 minus 1, in parentheses, times s1 squared, the variance of our first sampling of standard, uh, plus n2 minus 1, times the variance, that's what's squared, the variance of our second uh, sampling. If we just look at s with a subscript 2 here, that's just the standard deviation. So when we square it, that will become the variance. And then we divide it by n1 plus n2 minus 2. So coming up with the calculation, we have 12 minus 1 times 2.4 squared plus 15 minus 1 times 3.2 squared divided by 12 plus 15 minus 2. In the numerator, we'll get 206.72 divided by 25 in the denominator. Calculating that all out, we'll get 8.2688. This is the variance, the pooled variance. So now with that, we can put that into our calculation here and here. So we'll calculate out our t-test statistics, 73 minus 74. Subtract from the numerical value obtained from the null hypothesis of 0. Divided by the square root of 8.2688 divided by 12 plus 8.2688 divided by 15. We'll continue to calculate that out. We'll get negative 1 over 1.11369645 and simplifying down we'll get t equals negative 0 0.90.
In step number four of the traditional approach, we have to determine is this a one or a two-tailed test. We look at the alternative to tell us whether it's a one or a two-tailed test. It is a one-tailed test pointing to the left, so we'll shade in the T distribution on the left tail. We put in all of our level of significance of alpha equals 0.05 since we're only looking at one tail test. Our degrees of freedom is n1 plus n2 minus 2 or 12 plus 15 minus 2 or 25. We look up 25 degrees of freedom with a level of significance of 0 0.05 and we'll come up with negative 1.708. So our rejection region is any test statistic that lies less than negative 1.708. In this case, we have to determine does our test statistic of negative 0 0.90 lie in that rejection region. And it does not, it lies somewhere around here. So we will fail to reject our null hypothesis because our test statistic does not lie in that rejection region. In step number six, we continue to say that we fail to reject the null hypothesis, but we have to determine whether our uh, whether we can support or reject our claim. So in this case, since we have failed to reject our null hypothesis, we can't accept our claim. So therefore, we have to say there is not sufficient evidence at alpha equals 0 0.05 to suggest that the manufacturer's watt usage of its 17-inch flat panel monitors is less than that of its competitor. So we always restate what the claim says. We don't change the claim. It is what somebody says. We can just say that there is or is not sufficient evidence. And in this case, we say that there is not sufficient evidence.